Hey there, let's talk about how to use one man's trash is another man's treasure to supersize and grow our business. No matter what's going on in the world around us, no matter what's going on in our environment, how can we grow our business knowing and using the saying, the expression that one man's trash is another man's ple treasure, pleasure. Well, that's true. One man's pain is another man's pleasure. One's fault is another man's lesson. One man's loss is another man's profit or gain. We've seen that a lot in COVID-19. One man's ceiling is another man's floor. One man's pleasure, I think I said pleasure and pain as I knock a, a monkey on the floor. One man's sin is another man's blessing. One man's right is another man's wrong. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of this particular idiom or saying, but the original was credited to the Roman poet Lucretius when he basically used it to describe any time or any situation in which two people disagree about something. One is, uh, looking at the one side of it and one's looking at the other side of it. We live in a polar universe. So there's a lot of examples of this. Uh, what's valuable to me is definitely not valuable to my ex-husband. I had lots of experiences with that where I valued certain things and he thought they were trash. He actually used to call them my hidden treasures, which is super annoying to me. Uh, and of course, you know, we're not married anymore. So obviously that was a, a bone of contention, but it's all about when it comes to our companies, understanding that the only person that we're caring about that thinks our products and services are a treasure are the people that we're here to serve, right? The people that our business is for. And we use the things we stand for, the things we believe in, our core values, and hope they need to be in alignment with the people we serve to attract the people that are for us, for our business, and then to repel the people, the rest of the people, right? Because we don't want to waste our time and our energy on people that our product and services are not for. Uh, one of my biggest frustrations is when I'm working with someone new and they'll say, well, I will talk about well, who is your ideal client? Who are your customers? Who do you love working with? And they'll say, well, my product and service is for everybody. Mm, not so much. I cannot think of very many products and services that are for absolutely everybody. You might say water. Well, yeah, water is for everybody, but your specific brand of water is only for a specific group of people. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're honing in on the people that we're really here to serve and that we love to serve, right? It's really fun to do business with people that you like and that you really care about. And that comes through. So one group of people, the group of people that we serve is probably an, a group that other people don't want to serve because we pick them on purpose because they're like us and we enjoy helping them and making their life better. But that doesn't mean everyone in our industry or anybody that does what we do wants to work with those same type of people. And that's why it's so imperative that we we know what we stand for, we be ourselves, we go out in the world in a true and authentic way and attract the people that are right for us and let the other people go. Uh, we don't want to attract everybody. We want to attract the people that we love and want to serve. And we do that by knowing what they treasure, knowing what's important to them, knowing what their problems are and giving them solutions to those problems and continually building relationships and understanding them so that we know how we can can better serve them. My my goal and objective is always to create lifelong customers and add value to people's lives, not just a one time sale. And you know, businesses are structured and value different things. And there's neither 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 are right or wrong. There's no right or wrong answer in how you want to do your business. It's how do you want to conduct your business? What do you want to be known for? How do you want to serve people? And how do you want to be a treasure to them, even though other people might think you're totally trash? Doesn't matter. It only matters the people that you are here to serve and want to want to care about and work with. Love to know your experience with this particular idiom. Like I said, I have got lots of business and personal experience with this particular topic. You know, it's it reminds us of beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? Uh, things that I find valuable, other people might not, and other things that some people find value. Some people find value in brand name and name dropping and things. I got like no interest in that zero value to me in people that name drop or people that brag or people that uh put themselves above other people because that's just not the type of people i work with but again to each his own if i'm selling rolexes i'm going after a different clientele than if i'm selling fitbit watches right fitbits versus rolexes now doesn't mean a rolex owner won't have a fitbit but our clientele and who I'm targeting and how I'm going to serve them and how they determine if I'm a trash or a treasure. Somebody who owns a Rolex probably thinks, man, a Fitbit's kind of trashy to wear that around, right? I got this beautiful Rolex. I'm, I'm showing people my identity and how cool I am. I'm never going to be seen with a Fitbit. So to each his own.
go out, have an amazing day. I'll be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how much you use it to grow and supersize your business right now?